All right, we are on live. I just need to post it in our pages so you guys can see it. All right, post. I love your sweatshirt too, super cute. Thank you. It says, I'm not bossy, I'm the boss. <laughs> oh, because it's in black, I couldn't tell that's the, the black part. Yes, okay. Oops, gosh darn it. All right, we're technical difficulties. We're super excited to be on today. All right, of course. I have everything ready and then it goes silly on me. Okay. Patience is not my virtue. <laughs> Okay, guys, this is happening. All right, we are just getting settled real quick. I have one last thing I gotta grab. Getting my unit on here. And Jesse's unit's watching, hopefully, because yeah. that amazing. Okay, and we are good to go. All right. Where's my screen? Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. We are so excited. Megan and I are so pumped for our um, speaker today, our guest, Jesse Nichols. So thank you so much for being with us. I get to introduce Jesse with her accolades, and then we get to kind of launch in and just learn a little bit more about her and her story in Mary Kay. And then once you guys realize how cool she is, she is like the greatest, awesome training and words of wisdom for us today. So um, no pressure. But here are <laughs> Jesse's accolades. Um, Jesse Nichols started her business in August of 2013. 11 short months later, she earned the use of her first free company car, the Lipstick Red Chevy Cruze. Exactly one year from the day she signed her beauty agreement, Jessie debuted as an independent sales director. Jessie built her business by never quitting and always striving to be a woman of excellence. She has been a star consultant every quarter and has earned six gold medals. She has completed the National Court of Sales where they give you diamond rings three times with over 57,000 in sales this year. Jesse's highest commission check in one month was $9,400. Jesse is a super supportive husband, Andy, and they have a really cute pug named Olive. <laughs> Jesse believes in focusing on doing the work rather than focusing on results because when you are working, the results will follow. She believes that Mary Kay gives women the ability to dream again and is passionate about helping other women in her unit find and achieve that dream. In June of this last year, Jesse earned Jesse and her unit earned the prestigious pink Cadillac, ranking in the number six unit in the entire state of Oregon, which is incredible. <laughs> um, they also completed their first unit club with over 400,000 in sales this year. Her unit motto is, the only excuse you have is the one you make. The Dynamic Dreamers are so excited to promote five new red jackets before June 30th while setting up, setting the bar high um, and building her... Um, her seniors uh, national area, the future rain area, um, where excellence is normal is what they say. So I am so excited to introduce my friend, Jesse Nichols, and we so can't wait to hear from you. So thank you for being on. And we just want to hear a little bit about your story. I mean, your accolades are amazing. We want to hear it from you. Okay. So what do you want to know? Like how I started my business or what? Yeah, kind of just like your little ice, your mini ice story, just kind of your journey, Mary Kay, from, from you. Okay, so I knew about Mary Kay, so, and it's funny, I forgot about this. So when I was 18, I met this girl named Jamie Simonis, and she was amazing, and she was a sales director, and she was like 21, and I was 18, and I just thought she was so cool, and I forgot about this until a couple of months ago, but she actually used to pay me in product to work in her office. And I would, and it was before in touch. And so I would like, everything was like in a filing cabinet and like, I would help her with her customers and I completely forgot about that. But anyway, so I did, I would just Mary Kay parties with her and it was super fun. And, um, you know, I, I wanted to join her team. She was earning a car and she told me, well, well, you know, you need to have at least $1,800 or this isn't going to work. And I was like, well, I can't do it. So, um, it's too bad she didn't just sign me up because I could have figured it out. You know what I mean? So anyways, I could have been in Mary Kay 10 years ago, but I wasn't. So, um, use the foundation, use the products. I liked it kind of lost touch with her when I moved to Portland and kind of started using other products, things like that. Um, 
honestly kind of thought Mary Kay was for like little Southern Baptist women with blue eyeshadow. Like I didn't really think it was for me. Um, and so anyways, I, I went to school at Oregon State. I have a degree in interior design. I have a minor in art history. Um, I had an internship up in Portland. They said they would hire me. So I thought I had a job. I thought like everything was secure and fine. Um, graduated from college in 2009, which is the worst year the Portland housing market's ever seen. Um, graduated with no job. Didn't know what I was going to do. Um, got into, worked lots of jobs, worked retail, worked in the restaurant industry for like seven years. Um, and I liked it. It's really, really hard work and there's not a lot of room for growth. So by the time I was 27, I was managing a bar and I thought, oh, I've made it. <laughs> but then um, I was the weekend manager. So I worked Friday through Sunday from 6 a.m. to 6 or 7 o'clock at night. And then when people didn't show up for their shifts, I waited tables then until 2 o'clock in the morning. So um, it just kind of wasn't working for me. Like I was making fine money, whatever, but it just wasn't working for me 100%. And so I met this girl named Adrienne. And honestly, if it wasn't for Adrienne, I would not have signed up for Mary Kay. Um, just because Adrienne was not what I thought a Mary Kay consultant was. Like she was like super, I mean, this girl, I, she's my customer now it's super funny but like seriously she has aquamarine hair half of it's shaved off she's got face tattoos like throat chest like covered in tattoos and piercings and um when i met her i thought oh my god she works at mag and she's like, no, I sell Mary Kay. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> I was like, you're allowed to sell Mary Kay looking like that? And she's like, yes. And I'm like, oh my gosh, no way. Um, and so that's that's kind of what drew me to Mary Kay is I thought it was for like old ladies and you know, preppies. <laughs> and um, she was like super alternative and she was doing Mary Kay and she was doing really well. She was very successful at it. And so that's kind of what attracted me to the business. Um, so anyway, so I signed up, um, really I signed up to get my products at a discount. Um, and so I told her, I said, you know, like, I'm just going to buy the products for myself and you know, I might sell them to my friends, but I don't want you to like try to make me do anything I don't want to do. So, you know, that's it. And also I might change my mind. So you better hurry. So she comes like flying down my driveway in her forerunner, <laughs> signs me up for Mary Kay. Um, and like, anyway, so then I kind of wanted to do it. Then I started getting excited and I didn't really know what I signed up for because she never facialed me or anything. I just signed myself up, just called her one day. Um, and so anyway, so I decided, okay, I'll do a party. And I didn't really like know what I was doing. I went to Corvallis. I just kind of opened the starter kit and kind of fumbled around and was like, you know, don't get that in your eyes. Um, sold $400. I was like, oh my God, I could totally do this again. I just made more in two hours of my time than I do at the restaurant for eight hours, you know? So I uh, started doing Mary Kay, quit my job six weeks later, um, which I wouldn't recommend, I'm not saying quit your job, like I would not recommend doing that <laughs> unless you like have the support system to do so. Um, but just decided I wanted Mary Kay to be my full-time job and I guess the rest is history. Sorry, I tried to unmute myself. <laughs> <laughs> You are, okay, for lack of a better word, a badass. Thank <laughs> so you. You're a badass, and you are. Um, I think that's so funny that, and I, I get that all the time, where people think, like, you have to be, like, a certain cookie-cutter type of person to do Mary Kay. You know, I get it, I guess, from where we stem from and our values and stuff, why someone would have that feeling. But it yeah. just comes to the way, and it's not your grandma's Mary Kay anymore, you know? So um, I just love that you get to be – you know I'm um, fun and spunky in yourself and you can have tattoos and you can be different but that doesn't mean you can't be successful company and a CEO of your own business here um so thank you for sharing your story and a little bit more about you just to kind of keep it fun still you know what are your seminar goals I've heard you are a rock star with sales I've got to see uh, some of her diamonds on her fingers so um, just share this your goals and what your unit is running towards the seminar year Okay, well, my personal goal is to work to be in the top 20 of a court of sales. So I'm just wrapping up court of sales this week, which is really exciting. Um, and then from there, I guess it'll just be like in the bank, which is exciting. So that's a goal of mine, personal goal of mine. Um, I guess personal goal is to always beat last year's best. So for like 450,000 or half a million would be our goal. It, it's going to be a stretch goal, but it's exciting. So um, to hit another unit club is something that we're working on together. And then just really looking for, um, you know, who someone who wants to really work this business, like a business and really run alongside me. Um, we're really looking to offspring so we can finish up um, our future national area. I love that. That's so exciting. Um, just like as we pause just to and see how amazing, how amazing you are. Will you show them your quote of sales? You guys, you have to understand how big this a deal this is. Um, 
So I'll show you in a second, but Court of Sales, they, the company gives us all year to do this. Like June 30th is our deadline, and a lot of the company doesn't finish, and she's finishing in February, which is like mind blown. So show them the gorgeous diamonds in the last couple of years. Yes. Yeah, so my goal is to finish earlier every single year and then someday be the queen. Um, so this is from last year. I'll kind of, the light, I had to move because the light was shining in my eyes. So I don't know if you guys can see her, but super pretty ring here. Can you see that? I don't know. The light is super bright. Yeah, there we go. Super cute. So that was last year's. And then this is the year before. And they always have different ones you can pick. So this one I picked just because it was kind of different. I don't know if you can, there you go. Yeah, isn't that beautiful? And my little piece of advice about the rings is to get them to like, I got it to fit the ring finger, but you can see how big that ring is. They're really heavy because they're so, I mean, oh my God, they're so big. Um, like we're, I'm like complaining about how big they are. No, but ser for real. Um, so I recommend getting them to fit a different finger because they're so heavy. They fit better on a, a stronger finger. Just a little piece of advice. Just <laughs> yeah, diamond advice from yeah, Jess. And it comes on a throne. You get to pick this up. Isn't that so cute? It goes like this. So cute. You get to walk across stage and pick that up. Megan, your face is frozen on my screen. So um, oh, just so yeah. you know. Okay, cool. Um, sometimes if you jump off and then jump back in, you can, but do what you need to do. Um, but yeah, we're so excited. So I guess something on my mind is as long as we were talking about sales. So um, to put you on the spot just a little bit, um, and, or if you just want to give us some advice, like I know for me as a leader, I love hearing other people's numbers because it makes me feel um, not only like a healthy, happy, competitive, but it just like blows my mind that it can be done. So um, you've been building your business for three or four years, correct? Three years, four? Three and a half. Three and a half, perfect. And so um, with your business being built for not a ton, a lot of time, um, tell me like, because I know when I get to hang out with you and be over, like your statistics for like what your customer reorders are per month, what your wholesale order is, and then any tips that like customer um, retention and like building your customer base that you have. Okay, yeah. If I forget to answer one of them, ask me, okay? Yeah. Um, so basically, well, I, now I can't even remember what the first question was. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Share a little bit of your statistics of your, like, what your reorders are every month and, like, what that looks like for your wholesale order per month. Okay. Yeah. So, so okay. So basically, my kind of thoughts are to, can, number one thing is consistency. So you have to, if you want to do something like become really good at sales, you have to be consistent. And how you become consistent is by consistently seeing faces. And so, um, you know, once I decided I wanted a full-time business, I knew the minimum that I could do was 30 faces every single month. Like that is the bare minimum is 30 or more faces because I have to be able to, you know, especially when I first quit my job, you know, I had to be able to support my family, well, my part, you know, my husband obviously works, but I had to be able to support my half of what I had to pay for by just doing sales. So I had to become good at sales. And so how I, be, how I became good at sales is seeing enough faces. So a lot of times when people tell me they're, they're just like, oh, my sales are low. You know, how many faces are you seeing? Five? That's not enough. Like, you know, we got to see like 30 to 50 faces to really become good at something we do. Um, and I think the thing about Mary Kay is, you know, it's not like a 40 plus hour a week job. It's like two hours here, two hours there. It's going to take longer to become really good at what we're doing unless we're doing it a lot. Cause it's kind of like, you know, when you start a new job, the first month you feel like, I don't even know what I'm doing. And you're there like eight hours a day. Right. So, but you get good in about a month. So think about if I'm only doing it about two to five hours a week, how long is it going to take me to become really good at this? And so, um, that consistency of seeing a certain amount of faces each week. So breaking it down. So, um, for me, it's 10 or more faces every week for you. It might be five. It might be one party a week, but doing that consistently is what's going to help you become really, really good at sales. So um, number the first number I would say is my faces number. So what you can do too is you can figure out what your face average is. So I can take how many faces I've seen divided by how much I sold and figure out how much I sell per face to figure out how much I need to sell per month to hit a goal. Does that make sense? So um, so yeah, so it is, it's totally, sales is just a numbers game. It really is. Um, so the more you hold parties, the better you're going to get at sales. And so when I first started, you know, I just picked a goal. And so I think goals are really important too. I said, okay, I'm going to make a hundred dollars every single week. So for me to do that, I need to sell at least $200 every single week. And I did that and I did that consistently. And then I raised the bar and I said, let's do 400, let's do 600, let's do a thousand, let's do 2000. Um, and so consistently I'm selling a thousand to $2,000 almost every single week and have for about two years now. 
Um, so that means that my wholesale order, so a minimum to complete quarter sales, I'm trying to think of it off the top of my head. Let me grab my phone. So basically if you take a goal and you break it down, so 40,000, we divide that by two, right? So 20,000 and we're going to divide that by 53 weeks. So you want to sell 370, well, 377 wholesale. So you want to sell about $700 a week to complete quarter sales like easy peasy, right? So that is, what is that in a month? 20,000. Sorry, I have to do the math. So that's about 16, 1666 you're going to order every single month. So it's kind of like our ballpark to shoot for. So I'm consistently ordering probably about that or 2,000 or more. So like I know in... Um, in June, when we were finishing Cadillac, I, I ordered 6,000, which means I sold about 12. So, however you want to do that. <laughs> oh, you Jesse, asked what did you say that you love most about being in Mary Kay and being a director? I didn't hear the first part of the question. Uh, I'm sorry. Am I still, am I still kind of frozen? Or just, no, no. It's okay. just your voice cuts out a little. Okay. Um, what would you say that you love most about being in Mary Kay and being a director? Hmm. Um, what I love most about being a director is the influence that comes with being a director. So I'm um, being able to have a positive impact on someone else's life. Um, being able to teach women this skill to make income is so huge because I think that, um, you know, Mary Kay Ash, she wanted this business to be a tool for women to generate money and it really is and so i love teaching women how to do that how to um kind of become victors of their lives they're victors of their you know bank account and really figure things out i think that's really fun and it really brings me a lot of joy sorry it takes us always a second to unmute ourselves okay. um, well, that's great and i love that you know you hear some people that are right off the bat like when they start mary Kay, um you know I think I believe that I was given a platform and then Mary Kay was that platform for them to be able to reach other women. Some people, you know, don't come in with that vision and it kind of grows as they're in it and they kind of see that for themselves. Um, and so, you know, for you, you know, something that I'm curious about is um, just like what has been like a pivotal moment or a pivotal shift in your business? Obviously, um, you've grown some amazing goals. And so um, what's something that you shift in order to either become a sales director or earn your Cadillac or like what's the biggest like aha moment that you've had in Mary Kay? Yeah, I guess like what is that mindset? Um, I think that, sorry, it's kind of like hard to, <laughs> to like in my mind, it's like going through file cabinets. Um, no, I think like the most pivotal thing is just like, if you work this business like a business, it will pay you like a business. And I think that, you know, from day one, after I quit my job and I was kind of like, eh, I don't know if I want to do this. Like, meh. Uh, my mom was like, uh, it's your full time job. So you better go work it like a full time job. And I was like, wow, okay. And so I kind of took that mentality of, you know, um, how could I work this business like a full-time job? And I'm not saying I work my business like 40 plus hours a week. I don't. Um, but how can I make the time I'm putting into my business be, you know, really, really um, focused, like, and just to really get me to where I want to be, if that answers your question. Yeah. So just really working this business like a business because it will pay you like a business. And, you know, if you don't want a business, that's okay. If you want to work it like a hobby, it'll pay you like a hobby. It's just understanding that. And sometimes you shift down and sometimes you shift up. And, um, you know, I think that's a really great thing about this business is that it can go along with your life for sure. Has there ever been um, a time that you've, you because obviously you strive for goals and you meet benchmarks mm -hmm. and you set the expectation higher every single time that you do it, but has there ever been a time that you haven't reached that goal? How did you work through that? Because I know that can be really devastating for some people and can stop someone in their tracks and just make them feel discouraged. So how did you work past that hurdle that mm -hmm. you didn't reach it? What did you do to kind of keep yourself moving forward? Mm -hmm. You know, I heard something interesting this morning. I was listening to um, Pastor Stephen Furtick, and he was talking about um, basically something that he said that really stuck with me is motivation will only take you so far. You have to have inspiration. And so I think that when you have that kind of calling or you, you know your why, I guess is what we're going to call it. When you know your why, that will get you through anything. But, um, you know, yeah, absolutely. I probably miss more goals than I hit. It's just that the goals that we see are the goals that people hit, right? Because they post it all over Facebook. Um, so absolutely, I miss more I miss more goals than I hit, and that's okay. But really, I think it's kind of, it excites me because I'm like, oh my gosh, how much greater can I become? Um, it's something that I kind of think about. So for example, um, 
I think I'm great at team building now. Um, like I, yeah, I know I am. But when I first started my business, team building was really hard for me. Um, sales sales um, kind of came naturally, I think just because I'm kind of a people person. And that's really what sales is, is connecting with people. But um, for me, for team building, when I had a goal to, you know, get my first new team member. Um, I interviewed over 25 people before I even got my first team member. Um, and even then I think we interviewed probably 40 to 50 people before I got into my red jacket. <laughs> and, um, you know, I think a lot of people that would have caused them to quit. Um, but for me, I was just kind of like, okay, well, how, how much better can I become? And, um, you know, once I refine this skill, you know, how great am I going to be at this, um, is something that I like to think about too. So, I don't know. I think it's I think it's healthy to miss goals, and I think that um, the most important thing is not really who you are when you're winning; it's who you are when you're when you're not winning. And I think that that's what builds character, and that what's that's what makes you relatable to other people. So, um, yeah, I mean, absolutely. There's lots of times I haven't hit my goal, but bounce back ability is something that I really talk to my team members about. And so, um, you know, basically what I mean by that is. You know, when things don't go your way, it's okay to it's okay to be sad and discouraged. But how long are you going to stay stay sad and discouraged? Because you know, Kristen Sharp she always says the most expensive party you'll ever throw for yourself is a pity party. And you know, she's super du super duper true. Like I can look back on many times in my life where I maybe let something take me down a little bit too hard and for a little bit too long, and I can really see how that affected my income. Um, <laughs> and so a lot of it is attitude, um, attitude of gratitude, and then having this attitude of expectation. So, you know, if I go out there expecting great things to come to me, great things are going to come to me. And if I go out there expecting terrible things to come to me, you know, terrible things are going to come to me. So just expecting to bounce back and expecting greatness to be coming for you. I kind of think about like a bouncy ball. And so, you know, we were talking about this at my meeting the other night. When the ball bounces down, it comes down really hard. But the harder it comes down, the higher it's going to bounce back. And so that's something that I kind of like to think about. And we um, we have like a little phrase that we like to say, which is adversity is preparing me for greatness. And, you know, if you want to be an inspirational person, you cannot be inspirational without being willing to fail from time to time. Gosh, I love that. That's, I mean, it's just everything that we stand for. And so um, I love hearing that. And I love you talking about, I mean, and just hearing you pull from wisdom from all sorts of different sources. And you're American, I, mean, I mean, you're a pastor, you know, I love Stephen Furtick. We love Stephen Furtick and um, just like the nationals. And so you can tell like where your mind is and, you know, what things you're plugging into yourself um, to be able to expect those things. So having that, you know, someone filling your cup while you're outpouring is really great. So my question to you, you kind of sort of answered, but if you have any additional things to put on top of it was, um, um, what's something that you're really passionate about that you and your unit are working on or something that like, you know, we all kind of have our little, little niches that we are going um, through with our units right now. And, and what is something that you're really working on or uh, excited about that you're training on? And we'd love to hear a little bit about that. Oh my goodness. Well, I kind of follow the group you know, the Rebecca Evans, her 13 week training or 13, yeah, 13 week training program. So, um, really, I think it's just really important to focus on the basics in this business. Um, I think that, um, the basics, you know, repeating the basics over and over and over is what creates consistency. And that's how we become, you know, the masters of what we do. And so we focus a lot on that. Um, I think that my favorite thing to talk about is, um, like personal growth, the head game, um, so my personal focus for myself is um, to just be being the best version of myself that I can be. And, you know, I would never ask any of my unit members to do something I'm not willing to do. And so that's like a huge focus of mine. Um, so I don't know if this really answers your question, but um, big focus on my life right now is doing the Miracle Morning. And so I've shared that with my unit members as well. And um, one of my girls, Rose, is doing it with me. And it's really fun um, to check in with her about that. But basically just um, understanding that, what we put into our mind is what we're going to become. And so, you know, if you read the miracle morning, you can listen to it. I got it on. I don't like reading whatever. I like to listen to things. Um, so I got it on audible. And, um, to be honest with you, like the first half of the book, I don't really even think you need to listen to, you could like skim it real quick, but get to the part where he explains how it works. Um, and that's, that's the part that's really life changing. But basically, um, the first thing that you're doing in the first 60 minutes of waking up every single day. So, um, you know, reading something positive, 
positive that's going to help me grow as a person exercising for at least 10 minutes really really quick and um you know because that helps us process so just things like that um the personal growth to help us become you know who we really want to be and attract who we want to attract does that answer your question <laughs> okay i don't know your question but i liked your answer <laughs> i liked your response um, I know we're, we're getting close to the time. So I just wanted to see if there was anything extra that you felt like you wanted to share or anything that um, you feel is really important for anyone to know, whether they're maybe new in the business. I know for my unit, we have a lot of brand new girls that are maybe excited, but terrified at the same time. You know, you're a great example because you're awesome, awesome with your sales, but that can be a big fear for a lot of consultants. What if I don't sell anything? What if I'm not good at this? And all of those, you know, questions we ask ourselves or women who are working towards really big goals in their business and and maybe aren't quite where they want to be for the seminar year end, what advice would you have for them and um, any positive words you have to share? Yeah, I mean, I think that I've never met anyone in my entire life that was really, you know, doing Mary Kay and like actually holding appointments, actually working the business according to the business model and wasn't getting to where they want to get. So I think that, um, you know, kind of like we say in my business or in my unit is, um, when you hold appointments, maybe you're not you're not necessarily seeing the sale right at that appointment. You're going to see it. You're planting seeds, um, and if you try to dig up the seeds before they start to grow, they're never going to grow. So you have to let seeds grow. And I think that you have to understand that this business is a cycle. So it's a 30, 60, 90 cycle. So what you're doing in 30, you're going to see the results from that in 90. And I think that. Um, I don't know if this really answers your question, so I'm just gonna start talking. But basically, I think that what happens is I think that a lot of people are gonna quit in that 60. Because uh, so business, you know, business looks like this, right? And sometimes it's like this, and then it comes back up. But what happens is people hit that 60, that plateau, and they quit. So I think that majority of people never actually see it through far enough to hit 90 and to really see the work that they uh, from the seeds that they've been planting. And so um, I guess if someone was feeling discouraged or something like that, I would say keep doing the work. Like, here's the thing. Facts are not feelings, and feelings are not facts. And so if we want to sit around and dwell on, I don't feel like my business is working, and I don't feel like I'm making any money, um, you know, then we're never going to move far, farther, right? We have to look at the facts and we have to say, okay, you know, how many faces have we seen? Um, you know, how many people have we asked? And we really have to give that time sometimes to really grow and to kind of pull into fruition, I think. Um, so I would just encourage people to keep going. And when you start to get into the feelings, stop, stop your feelings. Feelings are, feelings are lies. <laughs> They're not true. Um, you know, cause I could feel one thing and Hannah could be like, that's crazy. That's not true. Um, so really getting back to the facts, really plugging yourself into something positive and just not quitting. I think that perseverance is, is a really important skill. And I think that, um, it's a skill that we can all work on being better at. So, um, that's what I would say. If you don't, if you're not seeing your results, stop focusing on your results and start, start focusing on the work. Because I, like I said, I've never met anyone that's doing the work and it's not coming together. So, you know, being really honest with ourselves about those numbers and having grace for ourselves, um, to kind of grow into that. So, um, um, you know, that's absolutely what I would say. Um, the other thing I would say to someone that's new and they're like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to sell anything. Um, you sell things all the time. You just don't realize it. I mean, you refer people to things all the time. <laughs> you send people to Target all the time. Target's making lots of money off of you and you don't even know it. Um, so, you know, the thing is, is Mary Kay Ashton asked us to be great at sales. She asked us to be great at blessing other women. Um, she asked us to create personal connections with the people that we're facialing, um, create long lasting relationships. So this kind of goes to what Hannah was saying about um, um, you know, how to build a strong customer base. My first year I had over 400 customers and it's because I spent time really getting to know those people at those appointments. Um, and I don't follow up all the time, but I follow up. And um, when you create a friendship with someone, people will want to support you. People want to be behind you. And the thing about sales is it's not really selling the product as much as it, as it is selling yourself. So am I being a genuine person or am I here just trying to make money? Because if I'm here just trying to make money, chances are people know that. People can see through you and you're not going to make any money. But if you, Mary Kay Ash always said, leave, take the dollar signs out of your eyes, right? Leave the dollar signs at home and just focus on blessing people and I know that anytime I've just focused on blessing people loving my business loving you know what do I love the most about my business and focused on those things that's when the you know the money came from that 
That's amazing. Oh, I just love it. I love it. And I love that you talked about um, so many things that just, you know, I know oops, it's 430 uh, that are on your heart. Um, and just, I love that you talked about perseverance because I think it's just such a good reminder as a sales director. I mean, you know, you know, for our stuff and wanting, you know, results to happen for our unit members and just knowing that there is a cycle and that, um, I love, if you guys don't know who Stephen Furtick is, he is a pastor of, um, Elevation Church and he has an app and you can watch all of his sermons and he's amazing. But, um, he's been doing a series on like pre, um, precision, perseverance. Um, um, and he talks a little bit and I love that you mentioned, um, perseverance because it's when we're down, like, everything we did before then to build up the skill sets mm -hmm. to persevere and not quit while we're waiting for those results to happen. And um, he said that it's something that you can't prepare for once you're there. Okay. Um, you can't like have zero results from not working and then wait for results to come. So it's something that, you know, we have to be preparing and building that skill set and building those customers and those relationships over time that those results can come. And so I think that's just so brilliant that you brought that and translated it into our business um, because we, our job is to love on people. So I just thank you for your wisdom and it excites me to hear your success and to hear like 400 customers in a year. Like I'm excited to get there and I've been in for two years. And so just like everyone is so different in this business. And so we just appreciate your um, I will always, as a friend and as, you know, doing the life together in our business, um, appreciate your just directness of <laughs> what, this is what we do and this is, we love on people. And so thank you so much. I so appreciate you. You're welcome. Thank you, Jesse. It was so fun to get to know you a little bit, even if it was just virtually. I hope to one day actually meet you, <laughs> yes. but I've heard amazing things from him. So glad she set this up with you. So not only I can get to know you, but also you can um, put a little um, piece of you into my girls and and have that level of expectations. You know, it's just like you set the level of um, of, of expectation high. You know, um, it's a level of excellence that you expect, obviously, from your people, and that's what Mary Kay Ash wanted. And so I'm so glad that you keep that rolling in, and that we get to instill that in our girls as well. That way, we keep that going, um, generations to come. And many other women to come. So thank you for your time and just being willing to set a little bit out to pour into us. I know I. Yay. Okay. So I'm going to um, jump off our live broadcast, but I hope you guys have a super amazing and powerful Wednesday. We cannot wait to meet up again next week. So watch out for the flyer for our next guest and we'll talk to you guys later.